welcome back to F1 Manager 24. We're getting towards the business end of this second season here. And in a small alteration to the plan, I'm actually going to do the two race this episode and then have the last three in the last episode. Just because of the way my free time has lined up this week, it makes more sense for me to do the shorter episode now and the longer episode at the weekend. So that's where we're going to do it. We'll do Mexico. Still got a sprint, of course, in Brazil, which is why I'm okay to do it this way. If it had been two sprints, I'd still plow through three. Las Vegas can be a bit of a nothing race or a bit of a bonkers race. You get one or the other. So just Mexico and the sprint at Brazil in this one. In theory, the car's quite good here. God damn it. There's a red flag mid of Q1 and Malone is in the drop zone because he got hindered on his original run. It's Nico Hülkenberg absolutely binning it going into the stadium yeah okay well maloney's gonna be 21st unless i think i'll still run zane in the hope that the severity of the hindrance will be counterbalanced by the lack of rubber we'll see what happens with porsche and bottas in particular they'll get laps in before we even need to set off and porsche doesn't improve i'm not gonna bother watching him he does improve but not by enough it's only engine parts that you could get away with a stupid red flag this could be a problem. <laughs> that was incredibly dangerous. The good news is that McLaren's on the same lap as us, which means that's a hell of a toe that Mick Schumacher picks up there. And obviously the McLaren has plenty of pace to drive away from us over the course of the lap, so we're not going to get in its way, and it's not going to get in our way. But we will close in on it every time there's a straight. Thank you, Slipstream. That is a purple first sector for Mick Schumacher. Case in point. Track rubber is still obviously very low because that never recovers once there's a red flag, no matter how long they drive on it. Sergeant's out. Albon's out. I thought the LPs were actually looking all right here, but that's 11th for Albon at best. And once again, oh, we could have a problem with this. I'm hoping the fact it gets out of the way for the McLaren means, yeah, we're fine as well. It is a worse middle sector for Mick, somehow. So we're all banking on that purple first then, are we? Claire goes fourth. Ricardo goes fourth. Mick goes nowhere. How the hell did you do a purple first sector and then nothing? <laughs> over the course of the rest of the lap. That's a bit shambolic, if we're honest. So Purple First was four tenths faster than the original one, and then he went three tenths slower in Sector 2 and a tenth slower in Sector 3. How? Has to be traffic that I wasn't super aware. I mean, that's a lot of penalties, though. <laughs> Carlos Sainz is on pole from Piastri from Verstappen. Daniel Ricciardo only qualifies eighth in Q3. I mean, he'll start fifth, though, because of all the penalties, I think. It's a cloudy day for the race itself which looks like it's medium, medium, soft for Zane and medium, medium, hard. I know there's going to be undercuts, but Mick can do medium, medium, hard, medium, medium, soft as well, but he just has to go longer to make it work. Whereas Zane, I'll take the other way. Yeah, can't actually go four push in any of the stints, but we can do periods of four push. I'm just thinking, if you're going to take a penalty for an, another gearbox, I might as well do it here. It's mostly because this one that I was using in practice suddenly developed a fault and I just don't want it to blow up entirely because then I definitely won't get through the rest of the season on one on 67%. So I might as well put him at the back, take a new gearbox. I won't take a new ERS, because obviously this still goes towards m our finances and cost cap. And I realize I've forgotten to give myself the prize money. Well, it's great to have you with us, folks, as we settle in for the weekend's Grand Prix action. The Ferrari driver settles in ahead of this Grand Prix. Absolutely sitting in P7 and hoping to pick up a few points for the team. But just what will happen here, your guess is as good as mine. This is it. Here we go with the Mexico City Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Is Charles Leclerc on a hard tyre? I think he might be. Mick actually starts 10th, Gasly starts 11th on a hard tyre because of all the penalties. That should help us if he filters into 11th. And he does, so Gasly will be held for roadblock for the cars behind, I would imagine. Away we go, Sainz, Piastri, Verstappen from Russell, Leclerc and Hauger, who was the pre-race focus there, is on a soft, soft tyre compared to his teammate's hard tyre. How did you lose the position? You started last. Okay, well he must have got past Magnussen originally then... Okay, I'm a little bit confused, but Porsche is at the moment. It just, it just had the wipe. It just had the F1 it's wipe and then didn't the show anything. Theo, Theo playing hide and seek, it seems. And Maloney against Magnussen. Mick's taking Drogovic. Sorry, not paying attention to the front driver. Mick's going points hunting. 
Yes, Mick. I mean, that is a soft running fitter penalty in front of you, so please, please pray there is a slower vehicle in front of them. Ricardo is on mediums, I think. Just bringing everything down now for everyone. Maloney takes Hulkenberg, who obviously binned it in qualifying. I'm surprised he didn't need to replace his vehicle, actually. He didn't start at the very, very back. Yeah, and that's quite literally what he does. Squeeze his bow. Maloney's up to 18th. That's, that's a prize-winning position for us. He'll get further than that, surely. Aaron Sergeant. Yeah, they're all lining up ahead. And this is the lovely, lovely train, which actually, surprisingly, isn't led by Leclerc, although I think he has just attached from his teammate. Just about. And that's, in fact, Maloney does get Aaron. Because I, I would presume Leclerc to be the bottle, cork in the bottle here. As he gets overtaken by Ricardo, it will split the difference to his Fer Leclerc's Ferrari team mate and give everyone DRS again. What a lovely train this is. Oh, Maloney's got Sergeant. Into. Ah, oh, yeah, first DRS. Oh, second DRS. I don't know if that counts as first or second, to be honest. The second part of the DRS, we should say. Because those two share the same original DRS detection point. Fastest lap from Sonoda in 12th, weirdly. As Mick can hold on to Fittipaldi, as Fittipaldi gets Leclerc instead first. And that's Maloney through Hamilton as well. Gasly's next in line on his hards. So that'll be a matter of moments, I'd imagine. Mick has Leclerc next, in fact. He's fallen all the way to eighth. Halga's actually in third. After week after week after week of disappointment and no point scoring from Halga, he's up in third all of a sudden. Where the hell's that come from? And there goes Gasly for Maloney. And in fact, he gets us to drive away from him on the second DRS as well. So there's a second. Hamilton sneaks through too. We'll see how that pans out with Maloney. If he's like fully detached and can't catch, then I'll start recovering fuel with him. Because it doesn't look like Hamilton can stay either. My main concern here with Mick is if I take him on conserve fuel, then he'll drop out of DRS. And I want him to capitalize on this as long as he possibly can. He's having to go. Max Verstappen, what is he doing? What are you doing, Mick? He's not the slow one. Leclerc's the slow one. Surely. Hang on. What are you doing here, Mick? Back out. Back out. Let Max take the Claire again. And then you take the Claire. Guess he got back through Hamilton. I don't know why or how, but he did. Or oh, Teo's damage is, must be hurt. Has he hit his wing or something? What happened to him? No, bizarrely. Whatever he did behind the uh, blind spot. Oh, his rear wing. I could see it. Yeah, that's unfixable. Oh, ne never mind on the Halga front. I think that's Sergeant that's had an incident, but Mick gets Hauger in the final sector. Blimey, that's bold from Mick. Those soft tyres, gone. Hauger's found his status quo. Oh, actually, he's taken him back because DRS and all that jazz, but... Man, his tyres actually aren't that bad. I'll get Mick conserving now. Now there's two sets of DRS. Oh, God, he's got no DRS and he's continuing on the next straight. Just stay in a DRS, and thank you. Where he gets Djokovic back again. There is a crash as Science Gate on oh, Bottas has gone through Mick as well. Magnussen turn one. Let's see what happened there. Yes, Crofty. Which one is he? Oh, the, the one barreling towards it then, I guess. Oh, he didn't really do anything. He just, yeah, locked up when a tad deep. Ah, right. That might have been what the actual yellow flag was for. Delayed response. This must be a lap later as they... Uh, Lewis, Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton hitting a teammate. I'm not going to say anything. So I think Mick comes in one lap before Zane. Or the same lap, apparently, so he's going to have to come in the lap after, because there's no way I can make that work. Ooh, yes, undercut was quite bad. Gasly does fastest lap. He's come out on... Wait, hang on, he's come out on mediums. How's he done a fastest lap on a medium? Djokovic came out on a soft. Verstappen went on to a soft. How the hell have they not got a fastest lap? A couple of mechanical faults towards the back are making things a tad slow, but 18th is safe, no matter what, with those mechanical faults. I was about to say, this race is a bit dull. Welcome to a safety car. I mean, no... No way a hard from here is not the, not the thing to do. Has to be, surely. Three seconds faster to do the original one, but then I have to do the uh, pit stop. So I don't think our driver's actually far enough apart. Zane got through, Mick, and just drove away. But saving the uh, saving the pit stop. Yes, Got to go all the way around, but snowed is out. Mick's the last one, actually unlapped, I think, judging by the safety car. Oh, Lewis Hamilton's in the water today, blimey. This race needed something to liven it up a little bit. We're going to lose that massively because everyone's going to pit. Except for Verstappen, who's already pitted. Oh, Gasly doesn't. How much have got the penalty for that? 2.1 pit stop. That's pretty amazing. 2.3 for Mick. Doing them back to back, of course. Out ahead of Hamilton. That might be just front wing change, though. Or that aerodynamic part fixed now? By the time he comes out? Is that button going to go? Don't know. I don't know when that triggers. No, it's still there. Whatever he's damaged is uh, not a front wing. It's going to be difficult to us, for us to get points here. So, oh, I suppose Gasly's got a pit, but other than that... We might be in a spot of bother. It's where the mediums are going to last, actually, to the end of the race now. I don't think they can. 
They might ju actually know. Yeah, a, a medium would last to the end. We need to get caught up. So Hamilton gets caught up this lap. It'll probably come in. I can't believe it went on softs. Uh, we have to wait for lapped cars. Right, okay. So definitely come in this lap then. Let me know, the fuel recovery. Norris, Alpin, Drogovic, Halga. Gasly's in ninth, but he does need to pit. Verstappen's in 80, uh, eighth, but with 87 hards. Ricardo leads, but on 69. Nice. Hards. Science is also on hards he's put on before the safety car came out. Piastri's on a soft. That's his mix. Sorry, I was looking at Baloney because I thought, oh, he'll have a go at Norris. And Mix just gone. All right. Yeah, Hamilton has damage behind, and obviously the lab cars didn't get caught up. And the front two of those have massive engine problems anyway. And needs a pit again, probably. I don't think a soft can do 21 laps. It's all to play for now, as Piastri's got to make the end of the race on those softs as well. Ricardo's going to make the end of those races on those hards, those used hards. Science should be fine on 84%, because we're on a four, four, four attack policy here, and that gets to the end, so three on 83 should definitely be fine. Same with Verstappen in 10th. They should get to the end of the race, no problem. And all the medium runners should get to the end, but it's whether the hard tyre will be faster over the course distance because you get to push the hard tyre is the question. In 21 laps, I don't know if 2.6 kilograms of fuel will burn off in that time. Probably will. But we'll certainly get to push that fuel for the majority of this. It'll be DRS next lap, if Mick's even in it. He definitely is. Hounding Norris, who's going to be outside of DRS, actually. Uh, maybe. Our DRS is obviously stonking good on the grid. We're fifth best, aren't we? This is a great track for us in that respect. I need to bring that down. So you stop pushing the tyres for a bit. Let them bring their tyre temps back down again and then start pushing them again. I think we're being held up by Drogovic, weirdly. I don't know why Drogovic is the slow one. Unless you're being held up by Gasly, who was on worn tyres, and then Drogovic just got through in the last DRS. But they're all trying to get past him, as Zane's come to say hello. All right, Zane. Zane's making a hash of getting Gasly, but I think he might get him before the DRS here. I'll let Mick have a little bit of deployment, just to make sure he can get through Gasly. Does the Salva have a good DRS? Because we're not closing. Now he's got Drogovic in front. And that hopefully dispatches Gasly for Mick. Okay, so points could be on because Maloney's going to get into Albon's DRS at this rate. So we can bring them back up to push on these hards. Now they've called off again, we can bring them back up. Our great DRS is enough to get Maloney past Albon immediately. And then he should drive away on this second stint. I think he hampered him in the corner as well. Because he absolutely disappeared. Yeah, he wasn't... He was still alongside and then kind of backed out. Didn't It wasn't like he got squeezed out, he just backed out. Ricardo's fallen to eighth on those used hards, having started on the safety car restart six laps ago in the lead. And Gasly pits now, six laps later. Not a great move on their part. Still comes out ahead of the ones that had to unlap themselves. No, he won't, actually. He won't even get out ahead of them. Or at least all of them. Behind his teammate. And the Hasses, as Mick takes Drogovic, staying in DRS range of the cars ahead. Albon gets Zane. I don't know if Mick. I don't know if I want Mick to fight Zane here, but we'll be all right. I was tempted to have him not to overtake, but I think we might be fighting for tenth. It depends what happens with Verstappen and what happens with Ricardo, actually, because I don't think they'll have enough laps to get back through again if they pit. And Ricardo's destroyed his hearts. Verstappen at least seems to be attempting to hold on to them. They ain't struggling. I'm actually going to let them overtake each other now because it's actually beneficial mentality-wise if they go backwards and forwards every lap. Although Djokovic did take Zane as well. They ain't real struggling for some reason. Ah, Djokovic turned on the afterburners. Ricardo's still driving on those hards. 41%, he's now looking after them. Bizarre. Fascinating what happens with the front runners. Bottas and or Leclerc could be in a really good spot depending on what the gaps are. Oh, they're right next to each other. Magnussen's retired with his issue. We only got Hauga. Didn't see the replay. Unless we get a retirement out of the top 10, Mick's not going to get a point annoyingly. That one came through anyway. And Norris did as well, actually, but Norris will get back again. We'll burn that little bit of extra fuel on the final lap. Just make sure we're in this DRS. I, say, I want to make sure we're in a position to capitalise if something does happen out of the top 10. But yeah, we need to catch uh, Albon as well. But that's not going to happen. Unless we deploy, I guess, this lap. And then hope we get in the DRS. We dropped Hauger. Final lap for everyone here. I think Mick might be in DRS range. Oh no, that's a lapped vehicle. We'll have, we'll have DRS off that then. Which hopefully launches him towards Albon. Who didn't have it. But now he's got a lot to get caught up to here. Djokovic has got through Russell though, so... Maybe Russell's struggling. Piastri is winning, though, despite those soft tyres. Mix call Albon. Too much of a gap for Maloney to get caught up, but... Mix call Albon in the final. Get it, Mick. Get it. Stop them getting a point. Get a point for yourself. Ha 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 ha. Now hold it. Wait, hang on. Oh. I thought, I thought he was making a move, but it was just... Um, it was just a trick of the sight line, I think. I thought he was making a move there. Oh, he was lapping someone, I think. Yeah, he was lapping the Haas. I thought he was taking Russell. 
Wait, how did Albon get back ahead again? Wait, what? Where's the Haas? Okay, it wasn't the Haas. How did Albon get back through? The clan win the constructors in Mexico. I mean, a victory, victory there will do that. Let's put uh, Daniel Ricciardo well out as well. Valtteri Bottas, in a rare occasion where he doesn't qualify well, actually finishes second. Yeah, Daniel Ricciardo is definitely out now. Carlos Sainz, still only 50 points in it. It's doable. And yeah, despite Hauger running high at the beginning, pointless. We do actually have the fastest pit stop for a change. We did get the achievement for it there. I think we'll do all right with... Thank God it was, they recovered that one there. Spread to come. Plus mixed uh, response for the... Uh... Oh, he's finally got up a rank. As does Peter Pedrumu. About bloody time, Mick. Stop this, Mick. There we go. <sighs> Honestly, with who was available, had to. There, there wasn't really much choice. I've only signed him on a two year, so it's easy to replace him next year. But a lot of stuff is on risk of... <laughs> coming apart with only a few races to go we'd leave nothing actually went up specifically on mick for him to grow a rating there apparently car's okay here too well albert has had a mare immediately which is going to ruin our medium tires but never mind what's he done lewis hamilton has been a liability we'll just go the ones to the end then i think it's high risk but we're gonna have to do it that way okay so our one and only flying lap i don't know if we actually even technically got sectors in originally to actually compare this to. Obviously none flying, but Paul Aaron must have a completely broken vehicle because that's ridiculously slow time, even for him. Ooh, traffic seems interesting and not at all problematic. Piastri and Ricardo are in odd spots. I would assume they're on flying laps, but that McLaren has just got out of the way. Or Cher go well, Porsche went 50th, but then Ricardo went second. So the more in danger McLaren moves out of the way. Piastri is the one that was on an in-lap. Maloney gets past him. Mick doesn't. A lot, lot of hindrances. It's enough to see us through, but it does see Halger out. That's much more like it in Q2, as Norris just sneaks his way into the top 10 with his final flying lap. Leclerc goes on the provisional pole in this second sprint qualifying, but it's once again a McLaren in a spot of bother. Ricardo on an outlap. He's got 30 seconds to get to the line. He should be all right, he says. Yeah, he'll get the light. We're just going to have to wait a while for him to actually do his bloody lap. He's about a lap down, effectively. <laughs> Out of sync with everyone. Just about gets away with it. Bottas gets his way off the bottom of SQ2 to third. His teammate sneaks in tenth. Mick does cross the line, though, shortly. It's Maloney first, who's not improving. Oh, Mick had two greens and still went, didn't actually improve his position. Improved his time, but not his position. And Ricardo's through. Anyway, that's Drogovic out. We're going to lose one driver either way. A soft tire is not worth running twice, so Albon's had a spin, and lord, he's leaving it late to even get around in the first place. Bear in mind that Daniel Ricciardo only basically just made the line at a comparative point to where that first McLaren's just going past the DRS detection point. I'm not fully certain some of these are going to make it. Or maybe I was slightly overcompensating there. Another yellow flag. Oh, someone binned it behind Zane. It's Albon again, actually. Albon's binned it twice. The Red Bull gets across with three seconds on the clock. The McLaren gets across with zero. <laughs> that was dead heat in making it. So all drivers are on a flying lap. That was skin of the teeth. He has to cross the line first, though. Does improve his time. Sainz is second across the line. I don't know if he improved or not, but uh, Maloney's time is only good enough for ninth. He doesn't even get past Albon, who kept spinning. It will be the Claire next, who is the one who really needs to improve his time out of everyone and gets Maloney back by a thousandth. Oh, you jerk. And everyone's sorted. I think actually some of those people who I thought might have been starting flying laps were actually on out lap, in laps at that point. And for Saturday, the sprint and the qualifying, perhaps. Light rain. Or moderate, says the thing. But light rain is the prediction for the sprint. So maybe it gets more rainy for qualifying. Proper. What's the... It's going to rain for the entire sprint. So that's an intermediate sprint from start to finish. Right, okay. That's nice and easy. I'll even take a lap out because you will cover that for sure over the course of a sprint in rainy conditions. Lovely jubbly. Let's go sprinting. And away we go. 13th for Mick, 10th for Maloney. Let's see how they get on. Neither, of course, spectacular in their adaptability, which I think just affects rainy conditions altogether, not just the transitions. But a relatively sedate first lap. There's a bit of movement on the front. It looks like a bit of movement on the back as well. But in the middle, where our drivers are, I dare say without DRS, this could be a bit... Dick in this middle pack, there might be a bit of flying formation for drivers that aren't having to clamber their way back through. Looking at you, Hauger. Hulkenberg seems weirdly feisty. 
Hockenbergs overall is appalling right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if adaptability is his one attribute that he still has in spades. Because he was always good in the wet. Yeah, and Mick's struggling. Mick has enough about him to have offended Hulkenberg off. He's got the challenge of Hauger now on lap 7 though, which might be a little bit more difficult. Maloney literally hasn't gone anywhere. He needs to go forward two places to get a point. I think maybe to actually get to the end of the race on these intermediates, he's still tracking beneath even though it's on a full push. We'll just get the, we'll just get the temperature of the tyres down first, and then we will start pushing them again perhaps. Hauger's going to get through for sure, yeah. Oh, Mick going back, briefly. I think because of the temperature of the track, a three push is acting like a four push in terms of tyre wear, as Maloney does take Albon, but Gasly's gone through. I mean, this is irrelevant because they need to go one place further forward still. Oh, people have burnt theirs, blimey. No wonder we're struggling to keep up. What are we preserving for, boys? Go for it. Well, Maloney overtook Gasly, but I didn't get the replay for it. I got the replay for Mick overtaking Halger, and then three laps to go, push the fuel as well. We're at it. He could actually get Fittipaldi if he's good. It's largely relevant for Mick other than pride. Two laps to go, he does have Fittipaldi in his sights. And he pushes him off to get through. Good work, mate. Mick's joined the back of this. He could wake his way to 10th if he's good about the overtakes, but yeah, all their all their intermediates are on like 30%. Aaron's got a puncher at the very back. Maloney might, be a, Maloney might be about to set fastest lap. Not that you get a point for it. Okay, it wasn't quite fastest lap, but it was purple first. I saw that. Oh, he's slow in the third. Mick takes Alex. Gets one of them at least. Nice bit of morale boost on the final lap as well if he wants to try and take the other two. Yeah, unfortunately, the sprint is eighth though, isn't it? Maloney was 1.6 seconds faster than the Claire last lap. That's a problem. He has taken Drogovic and now has fended him off. Maloney has almost caught Leclerc. I don't know if he had anything left in his reserves to try and pull away again, but... Piastri wins the sprint, which is good points for him to maintain his lead in the championship. Uh, it's a little, little too late for Maloney there. Mick does get Gasly for pride. Aaron was lapped. Oh, because he had a puncture. Sneak a point with Zane. So a wet qualifying session. It does start wet as well. So is it going to start wet and get wetter or start dry, uh, start wet and get dry? It's going to get wetter. Get your lap in immediately. I will wait for two vehicles to come out. Or just that one will do. Okay, everyone's come out now. That's good. That's good. That's good. Shouldn't really get in the way of anyone. Oh, Verstappen, you moron. I'm just going to see if I can try and sneak in an unhindered lap as everyone comes out again. How is your battery empty? Mick's gonna start the re Mick's gonna start 21st because I can't I can't get him out in in a drier condition now. And there's a red flag to boot. That could save him. There's no there's no there's no rubber because it's raining anyway. So this might actually save him if it dries up again. In fact, it does save him because that's similar to how it was when we tried to do the first lap. 249. It's back to where it started and will be for the rest of the session, according to this. I'm not going to go out while there's no cars on track because I know they will come out as soon as I try to. Okay, so now praying nobody comes out of the pits. We've got ourselves in a good position behind Verstappen and nobody comes out. Mick doesn't improve. There must have been some level of rubber before. I don't know what's going on. <sighs> Sometimes this game can be annoying. It's full wets for Q2, right? Okay, that's a new one. Is it going to go intermediate? It's going to go intermediate. There's no point doing a wet lap. In fact, it's best to wait till the very, very end of the session. Did Claire do two flying laps there? Or was he just well out of sync? Albon's coming out now, the fool. Okay, if people are going to come out early, then... Okay, this could be interesting. I say, we're coming out of what I feel like is the last possible second. No one should be coming out of the pits now, but it's a case of if people are on in-laps. This is as dry as it's going to get to do a firing lap on. There might be a couple of people behind us. Still technically coming down, but it should be level at this stage. No point looking at the deltas because they're going to be faster. Some people are finishing laps, although I think that Red Bull's just started one in the nick of time. Ricardo, Gasly, Hauger, Leclerc are probably all out. Four shares on the lap. Oh, Maloney's caught someone. Sights you moron. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that's going to be still be enough though, because it's a five second delta, isn't it? We've got to beat five plus five seconds. We've been hindered there, but we've as long as we haven't lost more than five seconds, we might be okay. Four, I suppose, because we're going to be slower than Piastri anyway. And we are. We're good. Wow, that actually wasn't that much of a hindrance, surprisingly. So that'll be Hulkenberg, Gasly, Ricardo, Hauger, and Leclerc all out. Three people still on track, but they are largely irrelevant. I think they've all done it up, in fact. That sneaks Zane into a baffling top 10, where it's back to intermediates again, where it stays basically the same the entire session. But I think it is actually marginally better at the start. But once again, I do not want to get caught in traffic. I'm going to wait for some people to get like half a lap in, and then I'm going to send him out. And crucially, he's going to draft a Red Bull, I think. Someone's had a moment. Please resolve yourself by the time we get there. We'll be all right. And coming towards the line behind Fittipaldi, 
Piastri's put a good lap in. Fedepaldi puts in not a great one, but Maloney slides in directly behind. And it's going for Snowden for Stappen, but that is eighth, probably. Albon could improve again. I don't know if people are going to improve. It's going to be marginally wetter. There's a red flag. That might change things. Oh, the Hasses are not having fun. Oh, no, it was Djokovic, wasn't it? Sorry. But it was Hulkenberg and... What did I say? Hey, it's going to be wetter. Okay. It's gone the wrong way. And I presume it's going to stay like that? It is, yeah. Okay. No point sending them out then. People might do a futile lap, but no one's going to go faster. Oh, no. Everyone sensibly stayed in. Good AI. Well done. I was going to say, I want to do the most aggressive strategy I possibly can with Mick Schumacher because... How many softs has he got? He has got three softs. Eh, two stop is faster. Although, I will just sneak that in, just so he can go aggressive at the start. Maloney's fine because he can push and he'll be, he'll be okay, but again, I might just sneak it one lap early. There we are. Get him to push off the line, and then two different worlds. 20th for Mick, 8th for Maloney. Welcome back, everyone. The final preparations are now being made as we head into the race. There'll be plenty closely watching the Alpine driver in this one. They'll be a bit frustrated to start in P18, but if they nail their race strategy, who knows what they can pull off. Right, let's get to it then. And now, it's time for the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. And it's lights out. And away we go! Good start. But, well, I say that. Mix has been taken by Hamilton, but Maloney's maintained eighth. Mix on the inside of Hamilton, ultimately, here. And depending on whether or not Sargent leaves the door open, could have a run on Sargent. And indeed he does. Because Sargent's on a hard tyre. Thanks, Sargent. All right, focus on the front, though. Maloney, status quo. Oh, there's been a Drogovic and a Haas. Is, is it the two? Is it the two that crashed in... Is it the two that crashed in qualifying? Is that Hulkenberg this time? Thank you, Crofty, for answering that question. It is Hulkenberg. Okay, so now it is both asses and Djokovic again. What a homecoming for Felipe Djokovic. Hulkenberg got the penalty for that collision. Maloney's, Maloney's got Fittipaldi, sorry. I completely missed that. I also missed Mick getting Norris, but they are wounded, so maybe that's why. Mick's got a pack of vehicles that he's engaged with here. Aaron's the first, which he might go around the outside of, which will become the inside of this corner which is where Hulkenberg obviously had his moment there, but Mick gets around here without incident. Albon and Gasly next. Are they on hard as well? Have they put both... They put both Sabers on the hard. Okay, right, sure. Purple sector for Mick as well, for good measure. I don't think Mick could be more peak performance if he tried. There's a tiny wedge that's missing, but other than that, he has 91 accuracy. He has a 90 stat for the first time, possibly in history. Maloney does have DRS off Sonoda, even if Sonoda doesn't have it there. Could be in a spot of bother. He did actually get it. I wasn't sure if Sonoda was close enough. But Mick's taking the other RB, and... Well, as you say, he's take, taking the other RB. He's going to get stuck behind Gasly, because he's got on the wrong side of people there. He might have to let Albon go first. Although Albon didn't get Gasly either, initially. And now he's ahead. Right, so Mick, I need you to defend from Albon there. Oh, don't. Sure. Either way works. Okay, he's got him. Good. Mick's up to 13th on lap 6. Not bad. He's going to be fighting with Albon, I suspect. Uh, Gasly should drop off on those hard tyres. It is 5 seconds, though, to the pack ahead. Which actually is one train from Sites. What on earth is going on here? No Sites is wounded now, but his engine's giving way. This is ridiculous. There are 10 cars. Sorry, 11 cars. Inclusive, right? Inclusive of Bottas and Sites here. There are 11 cars in the same DRS train, although Bottas has got through. And Mick's lost two because of DRS. When he gets to know that, I'll wash that, but then there's a the crash. So Murdy's through. Is that Sites? Is that Sites falling through with his broken car? I think it might be, because the two ahead of a Mercedes and an Aston, so that might be signs falling through. Fittipaldi's behind. And who is this? Lando. Or is it from behind Lando? And you can see how the cars come together. Yes. I, I can clearly see how the cars come together there from that camera angle facing the exact opposite direction. All right, who hit him then? Who's behind him? Sergeant? Was it Sergeant who hit him? It could be Hamilton, you know. He's lost a front end play. I think it might have been Hamilton. Yeah, science is now causing roadblock. Everyone who goes through does get clear of him eventually. Although Russell's fallen off. Maloney, I don't know why he's struggling, but he is. Soft, medium, soft seems to be a rare strategy here because we're going to get a hell of an undercut here on most people. I'm surprised Maloney didn't make a move there. Go to the inside, Zane. Go to the inside. What are you doing, you cretin? Oh, now you overtake, not in DRS. What are you doing? Russell is holding you up. I'm going to say, you get in science's DRS, you'll get past him. That's fourth on the board for Zane Maloney. 
don't know if he's doing less stops or if people are just doing them in different order, but he's fourth for now. I've not started recovering with anyone yet, though, which I better start doing because whilst people are crashing into each other, they're not causing proper incidents. Make mine need to be a bit more conservative here, actually. Snow just pitted early, possibly because he hurt his tyres. Oh, red flag. <laughs> That's exactly what Matthew Oakwell just said. Porsche's out. I swear Ferrari just... Okay, so Porsche's out, out. Is that Piastri having pitted or something? Or was that Ricardo who... Out, oh no, Ricardo out of position, right? Yeah, it was Ricardo out of position for qualifying. That's amazing, and I don't need to pit now. We go on to the meeting that we're going to go on to this lap anyway and see out the rest of our strategy. Any problem is that I'm going to burn the tyre a bit, so I'm going to have to recover the tyre in order to make the pit stop now. That's ridiculous. Obviously, that gets basically half of the fuel back as well. Thanks. This is not 10.7, Hugh. Everyone's... That one is behind, though. You're right on that point. Maloney's going to get Bottas off the line and has done. It was our fault there, out of curiosity. No penalties. Okay. Sure. Uh, Zane. Well, I thought Zane had a run of Verstappen there. I am wondering if he's about to do a madness here. I wonder if some people are going to try and do a hard to the end. I will presume anyone on a medium is going to do a soft and anyone on soft is going to do a medium. But I don't know what anyone on a hard's doing, so... Oh, make our album back. Good move, I suspect. Ooh, lovely. Stop running Ferrari ahead. They'll make up some places. Takes Halga as well, does he? All right. Sure. Now mixed in that train. Uh, meanwhile, Maloney's fighting for the lead because Bottas went on a hard, did he? No, Bottas is on a medium. I don't know why he can't keep up. Zane is somewhat deploying for his life here, but... Sorry, Mick took Ricardo. Sorry, I was so baffled by that sentence I completely didn't click on it. How did you get past Ricardo? Oh, hard. Okay. It's, it's Zane... Oh, God. Zane second. Stop deploying from here, though, mate. Zane might just be about to give Piastri the win here because if he falls outside of a second, then Piastri might be undodgeable. There's another yellow flag. Who... What now? Hulkenberg again. Mm -mm. Right, okay, we'll watch that one again. He's not in back immediately, of course, but briefly, we're in the legitimate lead of a race here. For the first time, we were legitimately in the lead of a race, I believe. Net lead, I should say. There have been a couple of occasions where people have pitted and we've been in the lead, and when there was a safety car, we've been in the lead, because we didn't pit. But this is the first time we've had the net lead, technically. Proper race net lead, with no mitigating... I mean, there's a mitigating factor, of course, technically, in the sense we've had a red flag here, but everyone is now driving to the end on a one stop from here or maybe a no stop if they're on a hard so everyone from here is on a similar strategy effectively you can't stay ahead of him but every time he overtakes piastri in the first place gets him gets him confidence meanwhile mick still the same train from the lead here it's all the le it's all the top 11 in the same train we only ever took piastri and piastri didn't get him back this time this is fun look at those attributes look at them obviously drs you can't run away from him he's a mclaren he defends well there, actually. It actually forces Verstappen through Piastri instead. I mean, this is... What on earth is going on here? How on earth is he pulling this out? I mean, Mix come from 20th. Let's not forget that. Do we like Brazil? We're going to have to recover fuel at some point. And bear in mind, we're not actually that underfueled at this stage either. We should not be this competitive. I'll start recovering again in the second half of this race because obviously we've recovered half of the fuel already. Falls to third, but in one DRS straight. It was bound to happen at some point. Ah, you can't keep up now. People have started pushing, I think. Mick's fallen off the train as well. But he does have four seconds behind, so it's a good opportunity for him to get that rest of that fuel back. Or at least a reasonable part of it. Well, only he's fighting with Bottas, now that Piastri, Sainz, and the two Mercedes have driven away. I say that, actually. Bottas has got back in Russell's DRS. And it's now Bottas rather than Russell in that top four. Oh, safety car. Safety. Just got to throw this out there, Mick. I mean, behind a safety car, it would be three, fasters, three seconds faster to do the one with the pit stop onto the soft, but you have to do a pit stop. Whereas you get the benefit of the shorter pit stop now. So both cars shall go onto new mediums. Russell overtakes Maloney. That's not the highlight I want. Piastri's come in. It's Kevin Magnussen this time. Has, has, former has. Someone who wasn't wounded to begin with. And Sergeant, who's now out. But everyone's pitting. So anyone who wasn't on a hard may be pitting. Oh no, even hard runners are pitting. This is chaos. It's a good job we are pitting because everyone is. So we're not going to gain or lose anything. I don't want to do medium, medium might be in a spot of bother here. 2.14, that's an excellent pit stop for one. Mix coming in, they were well apart on the road. In fact, Maloney's gained places because of that pit stop. He's got Bottas and Fittipaldi back. Uh, Mick had a delayed pit stop and now he's down to 13. And he's been held for Gasly. Why? Why was Gasly let out in front of him? What in God's name happened there? Magnussen gets five seconds, that's irrelevant. How was that a faster pit stop for Mick? Oh, of course, the first one was under a red flag, wasn't it? And that's the fuel back. Oh, we had one lap car on Djokovic, who is basically n not functioning. So one lap of push on tyres, plenty of laps of push on fuel now. But watching from the position of fourth. In fact, some people got on hard tyres here. 
People that have used their allocation of medium, perhaps, have been forced onto a hard tyre at this pit stop. Ricardo had two hard tyres, I now realise, because he pitted off a hard. Maloney is the front-running medium runner. This just got interesting again. We were resigning ourselves to falling through the order and taking a respectable sixth or seventh, perhaps, but now Mick's got to recover, of course, here as well, thanks to that pit stop. Once again, our pit crew screwing Mick over. We, I say we, Zane, has three hard-running vehicles in front of him, and he's good on his tyres. Zane can make these mediums work. Mick's less good, and we're going to have to be careful with him, but we've got to make the tyre advantage work with Mick more crucially early on here. So someone like Albon, I think he was on a hard there, we need to get through. Someone like Gasly, who we're probably faster than, we need to get through. Hauger, Russell, Leclerc, Ricardo, obviously are different problems. It's a little bit irritating, all the incidents have been the people behind Djokovic aside. So only one lap of push there. Oh, this could be good against Albon, who's trying to go on the inside. And Gasly, for that matter. That's two for one special for Mick Schumacher, if you can make it stick. Or get pushed off the track. Either works, mate. Meanwhile, despite the fact they are on hard tyres, Maloney's having to go for this. Ricardo has split off, though. The hard runner behind has split off, which is crucial. And Gasly's also split off, so that's great for Mick, specifically. Because if Mick can get through these two and then up the road, that could be a good solid point for him from 20th, let's not forget. I don't know who to look at here because Mick's more likely to make an overtake. Maloney's just holding on for dear life. Sainz's mechanical fault gets worse as Mick actually does get a two for one special this time. And do. He will actually. Uh, yeah. He's going to be the front here, though. I don't know if he's going to be able to defend from the two people behind now. No, is the answer. But he's only let one of them through, crucially. Maloney over. Sorry. I read that the wrong way around. Maloney overtakes Verstappen. And finally, the hard runners bunch up and let this medium runner through and that's max off the road science next oh no piastri next sorry i pretty said science is wounded here like properly wounded oh no it's two different things that have gone under he's been er wrestlers for most of the race essentially has science but now his gearbox has gone as well and maloney is just in range for drs no deployment available to him now homing in on two hard runners if he can get clean air you might be able to get this tire temps down at last uh no they went side by side mick does take gasly and clears him. He's not making enough of a gap on Gasly to stay ahead of him, I don't think, long term. The lap isn't long enough to build a second up. If you can get a good DRS flip forward, then you can probably close the gap ahead. But 16 laps to go. Science has dropped out of this front two. Piastri's still holding on there, as Hamilton has a different set of problems and then does finally retire. Djokovic is a lap down on Norris in his home race. Djokovic is having an absolute... No, he's not, he's, not, he's not exactly a lap down, but he will be. This could be a problematic lap here because say, I'll just give Zane a bit of aggression to get close up to Piastri, but actually DRS did the job. I might just go a little bit light on Mick while he's still in this situation of being in DRS train with Halger and Gasly. He's 5 for 10th, but I want him to recover tyres in that time. Happy to, happy to burn the fuel, but I want to leave a bit of fuel in the tank because I think realistically that's what we're going to be aiming for with Mick is that 10th place. Whether Leclerc, whether Leclerc ends up completely detached is a different question as well. But if Mick can stay in there whilst being a little bit better on his tyres, I wasn't paying attention to Maloney too much there. He fell right off because Oscar did a fastest lap out of bloody nowhere. And Maloney, weirdly, was two seconds lower. I didn't think we were going to win it, obviously. Piastri, McLaren, ridiculous. But, wait, I took his fuel off. Why did I take his fuel off? Maloney's going to have Bottas for company. And actually, you might be able to stay with Bottas. Me doing a fine job preserving those tyres. I'll keep on his deltas. Make sure he never drops Halga slash Gasly. Because if he can recover tyres in that situation... All the people that had faults are now out. Norris and Drogovic are out now. Hulkenberg and Aaron's have got worse. Sainz has got worse as well. The staff has come through. We could still have a podium here if we're lucky. Mick goes to the front of that pack of cars. In fact, actually, this front pack with Maloney have reeled Verstappen back in again. There's no, bother watching, there's no, bother, no point watching those replays backwards and forwards, but Maloney, three laps to go and a bit. Technically, no one's been lapped now because everyone who was lapped has retired. So I, I think Mick has a lap of ERS to use. Maloney's is a little bit more problematic. I don't think he has it, but he's I think he's probably got enough fuel, actually, just to burn that fuel the last three laps. I don't think he needs to be conservative on that. I'm just making sure Mick's got enough tyres in the bank for the last lap, in sp specifically, if he needs to push. Realistically, Ricardo's 1.7 off Fittipaldi here. I don't know if that's going to come down or not. Seventh is certain, because science is well off. 0.5 fuel-wise, is Mick, he can push from here. Two laps to go. Like, he'll get taken briefly. Oh, actually. Who's got DRS here? Sonoda did. Oh god, they both did. Stop recovering. All out attack. All out deploy. Deploy from here, Mick. Attack your tyres from here, Mick. 
Doesn't have DRS on Halga, weirdly, but there's another run to the line. If you can get past Halga, then you can get past Sonoda. Oh, no, no, wrong one. Attack. <laughs> no! This close to a podium. If Maloney had just gone the right way there, he could have got he could have got the podium. If he'd just gone the right way, he could have got a podium. Mick needed a little bit more to get a point there. He was close, but from 20th is not a bad fight, really. We won't be able to see a podium by Maloney, of course, because he's faceless. But Verstappen went to the left, and Maloney went to the left as well. And then at the very last moment, he decided to go to the right, and by that point, he couldn't get past. Oh, Zane. I don't know why Oscar's being focused on there. Starting a bowl, finished first. Good recovery from Daniel to get back to sixth. In fact, actually, that's a really good result for Piastri because of Sainz. Halga still doesn't get a point. I was going to say, the only count by shenanigans there is Kevin gets Nico. But saying another 30... Oh, so he got a point in the sprint. I got very confused there. He definitely didn't get the fastest lap. But yeah, good weekend for Oscar, who is basically untouchable now with three races to go. I think he might actually be untouchable now. That might be why they focused on him. 75 plus a sprint. So 83? Not quite. Hey, second. Yeah, it looks like we might be wrapping up fifth in this. Although actually, we're only one point off McLaren. In that, at least. That one pit stop cost him. That one second long, too long pit stop cost Mick Schumacher a point in that race. He did not DNF. Game, what are you talking about? They're giving us the money for it. It's fine. Pulling goes to 63. And what's broken on the car? Front wings. That's fine. We can manufacture those easily. In fact, it's both of them have gone. We'll be reactive with uh, pieces just to make sure we've got enough to get us through the races. But cost cap wise, we're miles off now because of the way we're doing the thing. So I don't know how to go about doing the engine parts going forward. We might have to reassess the way we do that, but because financially we can't get away with that. We still got 20, like we still got 19 million in the bank right now, and we need to give us the you know three months worth of prize money that we're not getting normally. But at the same time, most of these facilities will go under again by the end of the year. This one definitely will do. In fact, I need to upgrade it now to stave that off as best we can. Helipad is max level. That we need refurbishing soon, but that's a cheap one, I think. And the weather center probably worthwhile upgrading that now as well while we're at it. 11 million realistically is where we're at. And I need to make sure I leave myself 20 million at least in the bank to make sure we don't go into debt in January. So that way I don't have to manually put the money in and then take it back out again just to make sure we avoid that situation on year changeover. It's easier if, it's easier if I just realistically. So I need to make sure I've got 20, mil, 20 plus million by the end of the year. So you definitely financially need to re like refund yourselves the first parts like they do in real life. But cost cap wise, you don't come close. Where is cost cap? You don't come close. Obviously, all these numbers are going to be fudged because of the refunds, but so I don't really know what to do on this front because you're getting nowhere near. It might be a case of just being more aggressive on the uh, research and design and things like that, of course, because I've not actually done, I don't think, any more research and design than I did last year. I think I've done a, basically a third set of designs, which I didn't do last time. I think I did one set of, th of a third on maybe the front and rear wing, and that was it. This time around, I've got a full third spec car, and I might be able to get a little bit more research done this year. But even so, I've only realistically maybe done 10 million, 10 million more than I did last year. 10 million's worth. And, and that's that's if I even do get the research in, because I'm only doing two right now. I've done two already. I've not done a lot. In fact, I don't think I will actually get more research done. So I don't th realistically, I probably don't spend about five or six million more on this stuff than I did last year. So cost cap isn't really a limitation, but it's just the straight up regular finances that are the limitation. We'll see how it goes, though. We've got three to go. Loose sale. Las Vegas, Lucille, and Yaz Island, uh, Qatar, and Abu Dhabi. Um, so, and I'll make sure I'll give myself the money, the prize money. So, I'll make sure I give myself the prize money. I'll make sure I refurbish everyone's facilities to the same degree. Uh, and then, obviously, I'll do a check at the end of the year for which car parts everyone else used and give them back their money and what have you for that. Or refurbish their facilities to the same tune of whatever they spent, would have spent on those car parts. So, they're getting the refund, but obviously in refurbishments, mostly. Keep everyone else competitive, keep the other drivers from regressing and all that stuff. It's still a bit of maintenance to do, but it's a lot less often, basically, thanks to the last patch. But anyway, if you've enjoyed that, highest finish this time. For the second, for the second episode in a row, I get to say a new highest finish. Fourth this time. It was fifth last time out, fourth this time. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, ta -ra.